Hi students, I'm Miss Samantha, your spiritual care and guidance and community involvement animator. Uh, this month we're learning about courage. And so first off, what does courage mean? I'm sure you've heard the word multiple times, but really think about it. What does it mean to be courageous? So the definition we're gonna work with today is courage is the willingness and ability to work through obstacles despite feeling embarrassment, fear, reluctance, or uncertainty. Courage involves making positive choices. That's key, even though they may be difficult. So think for a moment, um, what's the first part of courage? What's that? Cœur. And then, I know all of you speak French, hopefully better than me, but so what is cœur en français? Is it our brain? It's our heart. So courage, it comes from the heart. So courage is making positive choices. It's that you know in your, in your consciousness or your spirit or your soul or your heart or whatever you want to call it. Like, right, we know when things are positive choices. And so courage is knowing in our heart what's the right thing to do. Knowing it's going to be difficult. You might be embarrassed. You might be afraid, right? It's an uncertain outcome, but it's acting. It's the willingness and ability to work through that anyway, despite those feelings. So fear is one of those main feelings that accompany courage. What is fear? What does fear feel like in our body? So we're gonna watch this, excuse me. We're gonna watch this video together in just a moment. And it's about fear and our body. So for a moment, just think of the last time you felt fear. Maybe it was watching a scary movie or going on a roller coaster, or maybe it was um, a test was put in front of you, or you had to speak publicly, or maybe you had um, a text message that you needed to answer to a friend or someone you had a crush on, right? What happened to your body when you felt that fear? Let's see if some of these things in this video ring true. Your heart and thoughts race. Your palms sweat. Your stomach churns. You're afraid. This is your body on fear. Fear evolved in humans to protect us. When you're scared, your brain sets off an elaborate and coordinated response, even if there's no threat. These physical changes from deep inside your brain all the way to the muscles in your legs happen in seconds. That's because of your sympathetic nervous system or your fight or flight response. It's part of your autonomic nervous system, which manages reflexes like breathing, digestion, and your heartbeat. Fear kicks your fight or flight response into overdrive. Your adrenal glands secrete adrenaline. Blood flow decreases to your brain's frontal lobe, which is responsible for logical thinking and planning. Your amygdala, a more animalistic part of your brain, takes over. Your heart rate and blood pressure increase. You breathe faster and your muscles tense up. Your pupils dilate so you can see the threat more clearly. Blood flows away from your extremities, making your hands cold and clammy and making you feel flushed and sweaty. Your digestion slows down. Your body doesn't know the difference between a real threat and a perceived threat. That's why your fight or flight response kicks in during things like public speaking or being in a crowd. To your fear response, you're always running from a predator in the woods. It's just trying to keep you alive. Okay, so we just learned about all those responses in our body. Like when we feel fear, like our heart rate accelerating, our, our breath uh, speeding up, um, the blood going to the center of our body, which is why our hands get cold or clammy. Um, why we might like shake because of the fear. So they talked about like the amygdala, right? That like animalistic part of our brain. So right now we're gonna take a moment and we're gonna learn a little bit more about our brain. 
So we're going to imagine that our hand is our brain. So we're just going to do like this. This is our forehead, okay? And then this would be like our spinal column. So this is the spinal cord. This is the base of our skull. And this is the limbic or the amygdala. So it's the limbic regions of our brain. So that animalistic. And this is what, when we feel fear and, and other emotions, it triggers that uh, anodonic nervous system, right? That triggers all those responses in our body. Um, and so this part is our cerebral cortex or what's often called our human brain. And this is the middle prefrontal cortex. It's like this, and especially this, is what, and right here, uh, what helps us have rational thought, right? It helps us to rationalize. Um, so when we're on a roller coaster or we're watching a scary movie, it's a lot easier for this part of our brain to trigger itself. So it's like we feel the fear. We get that adrenaline rush. We get that excitement. Um, but instead of like our lid totally flying off, we're able to rationalize a lot faster. Of like, nope, we're just on a roller coaster. That's makeup and special effects. Um, so it helps us. So like, that's why a lot of times we love those scary movies and those roller coasters. It's like that way to trigger that like energy spike and that, that feeling of adrenaline, but yet very quickly move forward to like that rationalizing thought process. Unfortunately, and other times it can be really difficult to, to put our lid back on, right? So when this amygdala, that animalistic thing, it like lights up and it like makes us flip our lid is what we can kind of call it. And so that means it's hard for us to like get that back down and to really rationalize and to think clearly and sometimes make better decisions. So a big part about courage, it's when we feel this fear and like our lid is flipped, it, it is, it's like coming back, okay? And um, acting anyway, even though our body is triggering all these sorts of things. So at the end of this workshop, we're going to have a couple tools of when this like lid flipping happens when the amygdala is like going off and the autonomic nervous system is like firing on all cylinders there's a few things we can do uh, to engage our parasympathetic nervous system but we'll get to that later so in our next video we're going to talk about acts of courage extraordinary ordinary and so on so thank you so much for watching the first video and i will see you in the second video